Look at this beauty. The good size too. Currently about 140 kilometers north from the biggest city in Tasmania. I just pulled over my car on the side of this rough forestry road. The car is just behind where the camera is right now. My plan is to adventure this remote lake that I found for the next two and a half days. That being said, it seems like I'm gonna have to proceed the rest of my way in on foot. So let's get going. just stumbled across that and I haven't gotten close to it yet but I have no idea what that is what the heck is that yeah just as I thought I'm assuming the hunters have used this area as their base camp because I'm seeing tons of shell casing that fire pit just there is a perfect example of how you should not leave a campfire. Let me show you a closer look. Half burnt beer cans, gun ammunition, dirty socks. I think I'm seeing even some dirty nappies here as well. Some tons of cigarette butts. There must have be a four-wheel drive track that I haven't discovered. So hunters would bring down their like, guns and ammunition and camping gears in their massive four-wheel drives and camp here and just trash the area. So I'm just gonna hike along the coastline for a couple more kilometers and if I can't find any better spots I might have to use this site as a campground because it does have a really nice view yeah. I'm gonna grab two sticks to set up um, a windshield with my top When the wind just blew over this top, uh, the, the rock that I placed on my top ripped a couple holes in it and I'm pretty sad about it. It is slightly warm here because I'm running late on time, but yeah, this will do. These branches are super dead. This is just a piece of cotton rag that I made at home. I soaked it in candle wax, so it really helps me when I'm starting fire out here in the bush. So, eucalyptus bark, nice and fibrous. Nice. Keep it going, keep it going. Yep. When there's a lot of wind, the top's just flopping around everywhere and it's, it makes everything so much harder. Yeah. I'm so glad that my fire is going nicely and my shelter is set up. For dinner menu, we've got homemade Korean marinated pork spare ribs, which I made myself. I'm pretty pumped about it. And some veggie fried rice. I recently discovered these continental instant meals, thanks to a friend of mine, and they're quite perfect for these kind of 
backcountry camp kitchen. I'm gonna cook the rice in the chicken soup. That way it can give it a bit more flavor to the rice. Oh my god. I wish you could smell this. Mmm. Yes. So just in this light wet 20 liter dry bag, my taco box and my washed cooking gear, pots and pan. A 10 meter paracord and hanging up on the tree because I don't want this some um, smelly food bag to be attracting wildlife to my camp overnight. So my mate Spencer left a comment on my last video asking whether I hear any wildlife throughout the night and my answer to the question is yes, I do hear a lot of wildlife. It's mostly this animal called possum trying climbing up and down the tree. The possums are these a big rat looking animal that has big claws so they can climb up and down the trees and they have this little pouch on their stomach that they can have their babies inside like, like a koala bear. That right there is a possum. You see? They can get really aggressive, especially around food. So, yeah, I do hear them. Shh, go away! I slept in. It's almost nine nine o'clock now. Lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. And the smashed avocado goes onto the top bun. Cheers to my dad suggesting me this recipe. Mmm. Pretty keen to go for a flick pretty soon. Alright, so it's that time of the day where you have finished your breakfast, finished your first cup of coffee and your tummy starts grumbling. It's time for number two. I'm gonna show you how to do number two out here in the bush. Okay, so first, find a decent stick that you can dig a deep hole, at least 15 centimeters, half a foot-ish. And then, find a spot far away from a camp where no one ever goes. Thirdly, this is my personal preference, I'd like to find a nice log that I can squat on, so that way my ordnance can drop down to the target, which is the hole that I just did. Once your ordnance reaches the target, bury everything with the toilet paper. And I'd like to carry my toilet paper in a Ziploc bag because a wet toilet paper is useless. So there you go, that's my quick little tip for how to do number two out here in the bush. Woo! All right. I had my morning swim, I'm all sunscreened up. We all know what time it is, trout fishing time. It's just a pen travel rod that breaks into three pieces. This is just a Shimano reel. Um, spinner jigs that I always use. Alright, let's go. Okay. 
straight snacked. Damn. First cast, seriously. You see? There are hundreds of these little fishes resting here on the shoreline. Wonder if they're baby trout. I just noticed there's a wind farm on the other side of the lake. No wonder it was so windy like yesterday. I've asked around after my last fishing trip and one of my master fishermen mate advised me to make my jig look like an injured fish in the water. That way trouts are gonna think that jig is an easy prey and attack it. So yeah, I've been trying that for the past hour and not having any luck so far. Yeah, so let's keep trying. Oh my god! Yes! Yes! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Take this out! Gotta drive! <laughs> It's a big one. Oh my god. Hey buddy. Look at this beauty. The good size too, at least oh, at least 45 centimeters. Okay, let me get the the hook out of you, alright? Stop moving. I'll help you, okay? There you go. My heart is racing at 100 miles per hour right now. My first ever lake trout was a big dude. Big dude. Thank you so much, buddy. I could probably keep him, but I'm gonna let him go. Thank you so much for coming to me. Thank you so much. I'll, uh, I'll let you go. All right, so that big buddy just swam away. And my God, I honestly didn't think I was gonna catch anything. So I didn't set up the, the camera properly. I'm gonna set up my camera properly this time. I'm gonna try and, and fish for the next two more hours. What a lizard. Oh, it's been what, four hours? Since I caught that trout and I had, I had quite a few bites actually. I had several bites. I even saw a decent sized one chasing after the jig, but nothing seemed to be wanting to strike it. So I think I'm gonna take a quick, I'm gonna take a little break now. I think I've had enough fishing for today, yeah. So I ended up spending the rest of my afternoon just chilling by this fire. It's about 8 o'clock now, so let's have some dindins. Right, so for the menu tonight, nice and simple. Potatoes. Asparagus. And sausages. Olive oil, salt and pepper, wrap it up, in my opinion, if you want to step up your cooking game, whack in some more garlic. For the parmesan, hmm, how much should I get? Yeah, just all of it. Asparagus, olive oil, garlic, onion, parmesan. Hopefully, it won't explode in the fire. Oh, the fire is really hot. How are you doing? Still a bit 
undone. But not bad. Potatoes just breaking apart. Mm. Asparagus is melting. Sausages, perfect. The serving portion of dinner tonight is triple the average human, but it's okay. I can finish it. This. This is a lot of food. Mm. Mm. Dear diary, today I spent the whole day fishing for lake trouts. I caught my first ever lake trout today. It was such a beautiful fish. I could have easily had him for dinner tonight, but I decided to let him go. I hope he live a long and glorious life telling the story of today's battle to his kids and friends. I love coming out to the bush because it always reminds me to appreciate the simple things in life. I caught one fish today and look, it made my day. I can't really see much stars tonight because of the clouds, but that's okay. I'm going to enjoy my beautiful bush telly instead. TTYL, Trout Fisherman, Big Mikey out. chilly overnight yeah see it's middle of summer and I'm wearing all of this but yeah it's good it's a good sleep so I just finished my last oatmeal and we all know what that means what an unforgettable quick trip with so many wild animals, from possums to snakes to my dear beauty monster trout. I suppose, now that I've reached my first fishing goal, I should be dreaming a bit bigger. One day, I would love to go after some monster salmons up in places like Canada and Alaska. So, if there's anyone looking for a salmon fishing buddy, please feel free to contact me, I'll be packing my bag right away. On that note, thanks always for your likes, comments and subscribes, and I'll see you on my next adventure. Huru. Better be worth it.